Welcome back, folks. Uh, I believe we are with Basil Chapman. Basil, can you hear me? I certainly can hear you, Jacob. Sounding very good. Yeah, how are you doing? Was your uh, was your trip good and all that? Uh, it was very good. Thank you. It's awesome. always good to be back home and in the office and not having any technical problems, <laughs> just having everything <laughs> run smoothly. I can imagine. That's fun, yeah. Well, Thank awesome. You. Well, Basil, what are we looking at today? So um, I'm going to start off with the dollar just for the moment. I wanted to show you, what, for, first of all, we, for subscribers, we've been long with the dollar actually since 2018 all the way up, and then it came back. Our stop held, and we still hold it long. And what I've been looking at is I'm just going to use this particular uh, chart right here. This shows you, I've got the right one, yes. This shows you the daily chart of the dollar. And when this green line, which is the nine-period exponential moving averages, average, crosses over the 14 and goes green, that's very positive. And look, since the moment it, it turned up July the 31st of this year, it was in, in the 101s, it's gone higher. It did this, I did this uh, left side, right side price time match here and it went to that. But what I'm really looking at right now is that even with these dips, that nine period moving average this morning early when I was doing my newsletter, it, the, there was a little S, and that little S shows like it did right here when it turns pink. When it turns pink, it means the 9 period moving average went under the 14. And yet, as the market started, it went green and stayed green ever since, and the dollar is at 106.27, up 0.65. So I have a lot of, I give a lot of credence to this particular one indicator, I call it the indicator of last resort because it, it, it takes its time, and when it finally turns, it's usually pretty meaningful if it stays that way for about three or four bars. It doesn't matter what time frame. So in this particular context, I wanted to show you something else. In the weekly charts, uh, in, DU, in the weekly charts, and I'm going to move this over to a weekly chart. There it is. Click. Um, the Dow has been, the nine has been pink, and so we were sh we went short right here, August the first, right at the top uh, at the top of this recent move, and we remained short. We did have a, a three times sh um, short. We actually had a three times long position. We switched it on Friday because it looked like the market was going to make a pattern that I call the dreaded H. Uh, I'll show you right here. Go to the Dow chart. This is the daily chart on the left. So it was, it was like that, and I thought, uh-oh, this is that part where it rolls very sharply to the low to test the left side low, which would be 32,846. So we went short, held the short, and this morning we got out of the short. With the, we took profits before, and we, took, we got, got it completely out. And the reason is there's a chance, especially now that we're looking at GE, these stocks that have been hammered lately, having a very good session. If you're looking at triple M, which is, I mean, three M is just, everything's gone wrong. Mm -hmm. Having a nice session there, up five. Um, a visa, the same thing, just recently had a very sharp pullback, having a good, these are all earnings uh, reports, even Raytheon, which really, I mean, look at this chart, up in the 109 area, goes all the way down to 60, and then had good earnings report today. So the way I was looking at it, <laughs> is if these really strong laggards start to find some kind of support and we, we're about to get Google, I, I, I have a difficult time calling these by their changed names, Facebook and Alphabet and all that. I right. like the original names. So, I mean, Google comes out and Google is holding so well. It looks to me like it could, it could, have, it could have a nice pop. Uh, Microsoft, is a fantastic company, just remade itself after 2000, the year 2000 when it was uh, the, the leader, it became a failure. It just dropped huge. And now look at it, it's up almost near the all time highs. So we're looking at these, if these results come out, it's going to mean that any selling pressure that we see now is starting to be alleviated by some good earnings. earnings and that I think is very important. So. Um, just to kind of refresh, I just wanted to show you the charts here. So this pattern that I always look at, which is the arch formation, you can see it in the weekly chart. As I said, the nine cross negative, the nine period moving average. 
I respect that, but we have not yet taken out the left side low of 32,848. We did in the S&P, and it's fascinating, each time frame, look, S&P took out the left side low, having a nice bounce today, but that weekly also went to the nine period moving average. So I have a trend line here that makes it really important that the 4,200 level holds this week on any, any bad news. But I'm starting to think that um, a major part of the selling pressure that I've been looking at for quite some time, and as I say, uh, using uh, some one particular tool, the on-balance volume, we got that short right there at 35,679 on the August the 1st. That was the high of the Dow, most recent high, yearly high that it's made. And we also went short the SMHs two days later, <clears throat> um, and they've been coming down. And they have also seen the SMH, this is the Van Eck Semiconductor ETF, the nine period moving averages cross negative. So in sum, what we're looking at is there's been selling pressure. Some of it has been sideways, because I always look at the market three ways. It's either sharply, sharply down or sharply higher, or it's sideways. So you're either using time, using price, or you're using time and price. And some of, the in, some of these charts and some of the indexes have used time and price, but you can see the semiconductor, which I consider to be really important. It's the semi, the chips are like the oil of the 1900s. Mm. We need it. We need it in everything. So that's really important. And the other thing is, um, crude oil is pulling back, but we still have a uranium stock. Um, and it seems to me, if energy rotates, uh, we have a stock called uh, uranium. Yeah, there it is. UEC is the symbol. Uranium energy. We have it in three dollar sixty area. It made a new recovery high today of 583. Um, and it's just saying this whole rotation through the different sectors and the different stocks. So in this particular instance, it might be that uranium is, if oil does pull back a bit, then the alter one of the alternative energy sources, uh, uranium at this point, is acting quite well. So I'm looking at uh, the market uh, saying, these are the conditions we have. The, the Dow needs to clear um, to be able to change direction, it really needs to get to the 34,100. That's 1,000 points from here. But in the meantime, there's, it could quite easily bounce to the 33,000, uh, 33,000, I'd say, uh, 400 level. And then we'll see, because this pattern very often, if it holds the left side low, then becomes an H, lowercase h, that goes to a lowercase m pattern. So uh, and you know, even we can see in gold, because... The gold chart uh, is holding very well, off, but after a spectacular run to the upside, this week is going to be very important to see, is this kind of a one-off? And then because the Middle East, sort of, maybe it calms down just a little bit, maybe uh, gold, which is the currency of fear, starts to pull back a little bit. I'm watching this very closely because there is a relationship to Middle East, gold, and fear. So at this particular point, the gold is holding pretty well. I'm watching it very closely. Yeah, I think we'll all be watching gold very closely as well. And Basil, again, I, I love looking at the semiconductors as a barometer for everything else running. I think that's super insightful, and I've been thinking about that like just by myself anyway. Um, so thanks for turning us on to that. And guys, you can go to TFNN.com. You can uh, subscribe to Basil's new letter, newsletter, the opening call. It's great. Basil, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see thank you next week. Thank you very week. much, Jake. Take care, Basil. Steve Rhodes started